So is the Omega Seamaster 300 worth its $5,000 price tag? In this video, we're going to take a closer look and find out. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to take a closer look of the Omega Seamaster 300. And we're very lucky because we have the black dial version, the gray dial version, and the blue dial version live with us today. So let's have a close look of the models. They are sitting snug here in our blue Safiano watch roll from iphilewatches.com. Link in the description for your watch accessories. So let's have a close look here. And we have the black dial to the left. We have the gray dial in the middle and the blue dial to the right. So before we have a close look of the watches, let's go through some of its history and get to know it a little bit better. Omega was founded back in 1848 by Louis Brandt. They have released several historically significant pieces, such as the first tourbillon wristwatch. They have been the official timekeeper of the Olympic Games since 1932. The Omega Speedmaster was the first watch worn on the moon, and since 1995 it has been the wristwatch of James Bond. The Omega Seamaster 300 was introduced back in 1993, and the model we have here with us today was introduced back in 2018. So this model marks the 25th anniversary of the Omega Seamaster 300. So now let's have a closer look at the Omega Seamaster 300. The updated version of the Omega Seamaster 300 that got released in 2018 have a slightly upgraded case size to 42 millimeters. Yeah, because the old one was 41 millimeters. Exactly. And we have the ceramic bezel with white enamel numerals and also a ceramic dial with the classic Omega wave pattern. So this model has a ceramic dial with laser etched waves. We saw that Omega removed that feature from their last model, but it's back into this newer model. We also see the trademark skeletonized hands and the helium escape valve at 10 o'clock. The bracelet on the current Omega Seamaster is sharper than its predecessors but the design looks more or less the same. And if you look at the model, you have a lug to lug distance of 15 millimeters and you have a case thickness of 13.5 millimeters. The watch is water resistant to 300 meters as the model name implies. And the current Omega Seamaster is powered by the in-house caliber 8800. This caliber is also METAS certified. The METAS certification means that the watch has undergone eight different tests. They test, for example, the water resistance, the power reserve, the resistance to magnetic fields, and also, of course, the accuracy of the watch. And the resistance to the magnetic field, this one has an impressive resistance of 15,000 Gauss compared to Rolex, watch that has 1000 gauss in their mil gauss. Also what's interesting with the meta certification is that the accuracy is from 0 to plus 5 seconds per day. For example Rolex superlative chronometer certification is from minus 2 to plus 2 seconds per day. What's also interesting is that on Omega's website you can type in the serial number of your watch to see exactly how it has performed in the different tests. It's quite a cool feature, right? That is very cool. Guys, we're sitting here with the black, gray, and the blue version of the Omega Seamaster. So Alex, let me ask you, which one of black. these- Black. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. The subtle black one. Yeah, the subtle black one. I'm, I like the, the subtle ones. Absolutely. No, but I mean, the black one looks really good when it reflects in different lights. Uh, I like that a lot. I don't really feel the gray one. Mm -hmm. um, it's a bit too, too plain, so to spek. I mean, it's too monochromatic. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, not so much contrast. And the blue is good looking, but it's not my favorite shade of blue. So 
yeah, I'll I'll stick with the black one. Cool. That's a cool option. I actually really like the black one as well. But um, when I have blue on the table, I really need to yeah, think sure. this through. Um, no, but on a serious note, um, I think the gray one uh, is very well done, very well executed. I don't think even pictures does it justice. Because the gray version, you can see some very clear blue d um, details on the dial with the hands and so on so i think it's really well balanced but when you put it beside the blue one the conversation changes yeah. because i think the blue one is absolutely amazing and i really like the shade of blue that omega has on this ceramic dial and how it fits with the ceramic insert how it plays with light how it uh, basically looks overall and I actually really like the bezel on the Omega uh, Seamaster. If you look at the outer side of the bezel, I think Omega has done an excellent job on the finishing uh, of the of the bezel and the overall quality. Yeah, but the bezel, it's a bit tricky to, to get a grip on sometimes. I, yes. I agree, it looks good, but sometimes it can be a little bit, uh, how to say, slippery. Slippery. Yeah. Yes, of course. I mean, if you look at the... Uh, the jagged bezel of the Omega, uh, sorry, of the Rolex Submariner, mm. it is much easier to turn. Yeah. So this is a little bit harder to turn. But how often do you really turn the bezel on your Seamaster? When you boil eggs. <laughs> <laughs> so, I I mean, obviously it has um, its function. and um, But nowadays, I think design is kind of overtaking functionality at some aspects. Yeah. And if you're really not buying it to use the function, I think this design of the bezel uh, is way more appealing yeah, uh, for me, at least. So I think the blue one with all the flair to it, it looks really beautiful and that's my pick. Pros and cons, Karen. Yeah. What do we like? What don't we like? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like I just uh, briefly mentioned, I really lo love the colorway of yeah. the blue one. Um, but also, if you look at the market price for the watch uh, versus what you're actually getting, yeah, I think that's a huge pro. And uh, that's on the pro side for this specific model. I truly believe that you get really great value for your money with the Omega Seamaster. Um, I mean, just look at the movement and the different testing that yeah. has to go through and how reliable and actually well built this model is and um, that is uh, absolutely on the pro side for me yeah. how about you uh, as we mentioned also earlier i like the dial yeah. the dial is superb and as you mentioned also the the build quality of the watch it's really well built and it's uh, it breathes quality and you can argue about the hands some people hate them, the skeletonized hands, but I mean, they have been true to its heritage for, yeah. for 20, over 25 years. Yeah. So it's a love or hate thing, I think. Absolutely. And the same thing about the uh, helium escape valve yeah. at 10 o'clock. Some people just hate it. Yeah. But I mean, like it or not, it's it's been there for over 25 years and I think they won't get rid of it anytime soon. Yeah. No, I think it adds a little bit of character to it. Yeah. So, uh, and when you wear it, um, you don't uh, really think about it. Exactly, uh, it doesn't bother you that much um, as you might think it will. Uh, on the other hand, let's uh, talk a little bit about the bracelet. Uh, yeah, yeah. I actually have some uh, critique to dish out here. So. If we look at the bracelet, I think the bracelet is very well done. Um, aesthetically, it looks uh, pretty good. You think? Yeah, I think, but... You like the design? I don't hate the design. Um, I, I wouldn't it's say terrible. it's the best I've seen. <laughs> uh, yeah. I never liked it, to be honest, uh, the design, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not the best I've seen, but it's absolutely not terrible. And for the price tag and the, uh, and the market segment it's in, I think it's pretty okay uh, design and um, it's very well built. So yeah, the actually quality is great of the bracelet. Elevates uh, the but, design as yeah, well. Yeah, but yeah, for me it's a no-go. <laughs> no, but what I wanted to comment on the bracelet is that I really don't like it when steel bracelets don't taper off. 
Mm. Maybe I'm a little bit too much a uh, Rolex lover, uh, but I really believe when a bracelet tapers off, it gives it that elegant touch as well. Yeah. This watch is full on sporty, but with a tapered uh, bracelet, it would be much more versatile. But also, Omega watches, you can put them on many, many different straps, uh, different NATO straps, leather straps, and so on. And they actually look very good on those. So that's on the plus side. Yeah, it, but, it comes with a really nice rubber strap. Exactly. Or you can buy it at least. You, you can choose if you want it from, from the... Um, from the factory as well. Yeah, and th that's also something I would like to comment on. When you buy an Omega Seamaster, you get the uh, you get two different versions. You can buy the steel bracelet or you can buy the rubber brace rubber bracelet. I always recommend um, all my friends that ask me what should I get this and that, yeah. and I always say buy the steel bracelet because it's much cheaper to buy the rubber bracelet than the other way around. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So how do you feel the size, the case size of 42 millimeters? I mean, we have chicken wrists. How do you like the size? Yes, I know we have chicken wrists, but for a 42 millimeter, this one actually wears pretty good, even on our 16, 16 and a half centimeter wrists. Um, on the contrary, if you compare it to other 42 millimeters that we've had on, the, yeah. this one actually looks pretty good on our wrist size as well. So I would definitely be able to rock this from a um, from a size uh, perspective. Yeah. I think um, I think the size is uh, very well uh, for this watch. I think it works, and I could pull it off. But if it were like thirty nine or forty, it would have been even 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 better. Yeah. All right, Kara. Five thousand dollars. Is it worth it? What do you think? The short answer to that. I believe it is actually worth five thousand uh, dollars. So the Omega Seamaster retails around five point two, five point four US dollars, depending where you are in the world. But with a little bit of negotiation skills or online search skills, you can find these watches new and unworn for around three point eight to four point two US dollars. Mm -hmm. And with that in mind, you have 20-25% discount on the actual retail price. And I think that definitely changes the conversation up. Because at 4,000 US dollars, you're getting a solid piece yeah. for your money. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you don't have a lot of contenders. Obviously, you have con contenders from, for example, Tudor and so on. We'll get into that in a different video. But... For $4,000 with the Omega Seamaster 300, I think it's a really good purchase. Mm. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in. We would love to hear your comments in the comment section below. Please make sure if you like this video, leave a like. And if you truly loved it, don't forget to subscribe. Arrivederci.